Hey guys, welcome back. Now continuing in the video series of this linear algebra for this data science. Now here today we are going to see as how can we select the required elements from the NumPy array objects that is vectors and matrices which we have discussed till now. So we already know as how can I create a vector and how can I create a matrix using my NumPy array library. Now here in this cell, I'm creating a vector. So this vector is having the elements as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And I'm also creating a matrix and this matrix is a two dimensional array. So the elements it is having are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, 8 line. So the shape of this matrix is 3 by 3. That means 3 rows and 3 columns. Okay. Now let me just execute this. Now if you observe, I'm having the output as 4. The reason I'm having the output as 4 because I had mentioned as vector and inside this indexing operator, I have mentioned that index position as 3. Now with the index position as 3, it is returning me the value as 4. Now observe this vector guys, this is very important because this concept of indexing is what we'll be using whenever we are working with any advanced topics, whether it's data science, whether it's machine learning or whether it's deep learning as well. So let's analyze this. Okay, as I mentioned already, the indexing starts from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. That is how the indexing will happen in the back end. Now when I use this indexing operator and specify the index position, in my case it is 3, so it has written me this value as 4. Now in this way, I can get the required element from my numpy array which is in the format of a vector. Now, if I want to extend the same concept to this uh, matrices, then what I need to do is if I want to select a specific element at that time, I have to specify its index position along row along the column as well. Now, just for the example purpose, let's suppose I'm interested in picking up this value as an output that is five. Then I have to mention its index position along rows and I also have to specify the index position along columns. So this is at the index position of zero, one row. And this is at the column, column uh, position of zero and one column. So I should specify it as indexing operator and inside the indexing operator, I have to mention it as one comma one. So let's see whether that is correct or not. So here in this cell, I have written as matrix and inside the uh, indexing operator one comma one. And if I just execute this, we have the output as five. Now in this way, I can select the required element in this multidimensional array. Okay, now if I want to select all the elements from a given NumPy uh, array or in this given NumPy array object, in that scenario, I can just specify it as colon. So in this scenario, I mentioned as vector colon blank. And if I simply execute this, this is going to return me all the elements in that NumPy array. Now, if I give something as, uh, let me give it to you. So if I give something as vector, and inside the parenthesis that is indexing operator, if I give something as colon four, then what this is going to return is this is going to return first four elements. And this fourth index is exclusive. That means it is going to start from zero, zero, one, two, and three. And it is not going to consider the index position four because the end index position in this indexing operator is exclusive. So this will return the elements that is first four elements, which is one, two, three, and four. So let's test it out guys. So here I've just written as uh, vector colon three. So I'm going to select, write or change it to vector colon four. See, we have the output that says as one, two, three, and four. Now inside this indexing operator, I can also specify if I want to specify my starting position as well. Now, suppose if I give something as vector, and inside the indexing operator, I'll give something as two colon five. Then this is going to return me the elements starting from index position two, three, four, and fifth index position is exclusive. So it is going to return the elements between the index position two, three, and four. So let's test it out. So this time I'm going to give something as vector uh, two colon five. So I'm having the output as three, four, and five, which are nothing but the elements in the index position two, index position three, and index position four. Okay. 
Now I can extend the same concept that is giving the range using this colon notation in my matrices as well. Now to give you that demo uh, here in this scenario, so I have written as matrix colon two comma colon. So this is going to return first two rows that is index position zero and one and all the columns because I have mentioned as colon without any specific index values for the column dimension. Hence, I'm having the output as one, two, three and four, five, six. And just one thing that I forgot to mention guys, this indexing, so it also uh, supports negative indexing. Now, suppose if I give it as a uh, vector minus one, then this is going to return me the last value. And suppose, okay, suppose if I give it as vector minus four colon blank, then that is going to return me the last four elements in my vector. So if I just execute this, see, this has written me the last four elements in this vector. Now I can also specify this index position in the range as well, minus four to minus two. So this is going to return me the uh, minus fourth and the minus second position. So see, three and four. So these are the values that has been written over here for me. Okay, and yes, so this is another operation that I'm performing where I'm selecting all the rows, but I'm selecting the first column that is index position one for the column dimension. Because the end position is exclusive. Now, if I just execute this, I'm having the output as two, five and eight. That is values from all the rows and value from this particular column index one. Okay, now you might be wondering guys, where are these used? Where are these operations are being used? If we take an example of this machine learning and deep learning. So if I want to talk about as where and all these are, these things are being used, that is this operation of selecting the required elements is in case of deep learning, whenever we are specifying the input dimension at that time, we'll be specifying by accessing the shapes of my input array. And if I'm, if I'm, if I'm trying to create my custom training data generator for my deep learning models in such scenarios, obviously I'll be only selecting the required amount of data for my each sequence and then I'll be processing on that. So I'll be using there as well. And in general, if I'm performing any data manipulation operation while performing the task of machine translation, it could be using BERT or it could be using encoder decoder model. Even in such scenarios, I'll be using these element wise operation and getting the required elements from my big NumPy array. Or in general, whenever I'm performing the task of natural language processing and if I'm trying to add some elements to my embedding vector or I'm trying to create something as an embedding matrix. As you know, embedding matrix is the one that we'll be preferring whenever we are working on the natural language processing task. So in order to represent my given vocabulary in the format of uh, embedding vectors, obviously we'll be creating a embedding matrix and this embedding matrix will have the shape something as uh, number of vocabulary. That means number of words in my vocabulary, which are unique words by number of latent dimension. Okay, so I'll be creating a matrix with this dimension of number of words in my vocabulary into number of dimensions that I want to consider over there for each embedding vector. As you can see, this is also a matrix notation. And whenever we are doing any processing on a specific word, we'll be interested in getting the value only on that particular row because each row represents a single embedding vector. In general, we'll be making use of these kind of operations on sequence model. It could be uh, hidden Markov model or Markov chain or it could be naive base, naive base models and so on. So in all those scenarios, we'll be interested in getting only the required part in my given input data. Now, last but not the least, in case of machine learning or deep learning, if I want to access the required shape during the data pre-processing in such scenarios, I'll be making use of this operations as well. That is getting the required element from my NumPy array. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Now I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial of linear algebra for data science. Thank you so much guys. Take care and subscribe to our channel.